Hi everybody, I'm Luke Hector from The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, please thumb up the video, consider subscribing to the Patreon to help me out, or mainly just the channel itself. But of course, leave a comment on the video. Tell me about your thoughts on this game, or anything by Ludenor, or about the video, whatever. Let's engage in some conversation. We'll get on with the review in just a minute, but first, a quick word from the sponsor. As a fellow gamer, you'll understand this is unacceptable. The solution? Head down to my new sponsor, kiender.co.uk. Kiender stocks many of the hot new releases as well as some old hidden gems. Free delivery on orders over £30, further discounts on bulk purchases, and even 5% of your spending refunded back to you as points to be used for further discounts down the line. If you use the referral link in the description below and sign up for a new account, you'll get 5% discount on your first order over £60. So let's make gaps in your collection a thing of the past. Get down to Kiender and start saving today. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. Get on with it. And thank you in this case to Kiender for sending me a review copy of Living Forest 2 Review. So my background to this was mainly from last year Essen and the recent Spiel the Yaris Awards. So I played this at Essen last year and I thought, well, this is quite cool, okay, but I need more time with it. It was not the best circumstances to play it with. I mean, I, uh, you know, I literally, no word of a lie, I had a couple playing it with me. They hadn't played that many games. It was quite a slow game. And honestly, one of them was more concerned with their newborn baby than they were the game for obvious, uh, you know, normal perfectly reasonable reasons. Damn you, vile woman! You know, it just made the game not your atypical, like, format. So I figured when this got announced in the Spiel the Yaris Awards, I was like, hmm, okay, maybe this is worth giving another look. But I was a little bit concerned that it was in the Kennerspiel category. And I must admit, my thoughts on the Spiel the Yaris Awards are kind of declining as time goes on, but Spiel the Yaris is essentially the family game, like Gateway Game Award. Kinderspiel now just seems to be whatever the hell else that isn't for families or kids anymore, because kids have got the Kinderspiel one. Because we've had games from Dune Imperium to Terraforming Mars to this in the Kinderspiel, and for reasons we'll get onto later, I'm not certain this is really a Kinderspiel game, but you know, like I say, that's just personal musings, they can do their awards how they like. I never get involved in politics. So Living Forest combines a few mechanics from some other games, nothing particularly unique, but it does use them in different ways. Firstly, everybody is essentially playing a spirit, defending the forest from some evil fire spirit. We'll, uh, we'll say it's Zed in this particular case. Evil Zed. Yeah, evil Zed burning down the forest. And the idea is, is that everybody is playing animal cards in order to gain the resources or the icons in order to perform actions which can put out fires, grow protective trees, or do some weird ring the ring the roses around this board. We'll get on to that in a minute. But the idea is, is that it uses a card system very similar to a game called Mystic Veil, vale, which you may not have played. The idea is, is that it's sort of a deck building game, and in this one you do add cards to your deck, but what you essentially do each round is simultaneously everybody flips the cards off their deck, and each card has got icons on the left hand side that dictate you know, how powerful certain actions can be. But what you do is that you keep flipping these cards and totaling up all the icons, and you can sort of flip as many as you like and go, ah, I'll flip another one, maybe another one. But in this case, I've got nothing but, you know, nice light creatures. This is all well and good. But for the purposes of, uh, you know, <laughs> actually getting the point across, you know, eventually you're going to draw these, what I like to call nighttime animals, but effectively they're solitary animals. They're powerful cards, but they have a symbol at the top, which means if you draw three of these in your display, you effectively bust. So I've just drawn one there. I then draw a second one and I'm like, ugh. Do I want to draw a third one or not? Maybe I'll just hold back and leave it at that. But then you might go, nah, I want more. Free, oh, I'm good. Let's try another one. Ah, there's my third one. Now I bust. Now, the only thing that busting does in this game is means that instead of two actions around, you get one. It's annoying, but it's not quite as crippling as, say, what happens in Mystic Veil vale whenever you bust. But then what happens is that everybody in turn order gets to choose one of four actions in a round which can involve buying new cards, so buying more animals, more powerful cards to add to your display. It can be putting out fires, which is, you know, one of the victory conditions, more on that in a second, but it enables you to basically stop everybody collecting these dead cards, which are effectively nothing but the bad symbol on them and nothing else. You can plant trees, which again is a victory condition, but they go on your board and grant you permanent bonuses. So when you complete rows and columns or get certain trees, excuse me, they add icons to the various actions on top of all your cards. So they can be quite useful as well. And then finally, there's a little ring the ring of roses mechanic here where you essentially have this board and 
For every wind icon you have, you move your character across, leapfrogging other players, and you get the effect of where you land. But on top of that, by leapfrogging another player, you get to take one of their victory point markers from them, which can help you to win and hinder them in some way. Not crippling, but you kind of know it's there. That's essentially the gist of a typical round, and you just carry on until one of three victory conditions is met. You either collect 12 fire tokens, you, you plant 12 different trees, or you have in your display on your board 12 of what is known as essentially the lotus flower. It's another icon on the bottom of the card, and if you can get 12 of them showing up in some way, that's a win also. So it's effectively a race. There is no one more turn and the game ends, or wait until everyone's got equal turns. No, it's at the end of the round, did anyone meet one of those three conditions? Game end. That's it. It is a pure race affair. Now the first easy thing to get out of the way is the components and the artwork are pretty good actually. These cards are decent quality cards. I recommend sleeving them because you are going to be constantly flipping them off a deck and shuffling new ones in and that. But there's not many cards to sleeve and it is actually just really nice pleasant artwork. You know, I think the artwork on these animals in particular is really really cool and you've got a nice big selection of them. Including one spider one. Take that you winged spawn of Satan! You've got, you know, cardboard fire tokens, you've got little standees with nice artwork for your um, interesting looking spirit, shall we say. I mean, spirit either eat your heart out, I think, with some of these uh, looks. And you've got a couple of stands that you do to put all the different trees in there. And don't worry, it's not too hard to put these together and you don't need to disassemble them in the back. So they are fine, just maybe don't manhandle them like crazy. But all in all, it's a decent level of production for the cost, which is pretty cheap. I mean, Kienda sell this as something like in the early 20s, I think, like 22, 23 pound. I think most retailers are kind of in that bracket as well. You're talking around 25 pound max for this game. That's not thing about shipping, but yeah, that's pretty cheap. For a full box size game. And this isn't even all the components. I mean, there's more cards in here. There's more player stuff. There's more tokens. I just haven't got them out. But, you know, you've got all these different animal creatures from three different tiers. So they're kind of laid out a bit like in Splendor. And so there's a lot of different cards to buy. There's a lot of different things to do. It's not bad, really, for something that's in the early £20 bracket. Really good value for money here from Ludinor. Now, are you telling me that's not worth 20 shekels? The turns are pretty straightforward, and it's not even a particularly large rule book. I mean, this is a fairly thin rule book. Lots of pictorial representation for what uh, actions do. Very clear. I didn't find it very difficult at all to learn the game from this rule book. There are one or two little minor fiddly things you need to bear in mind. Stuff with, like, the scoring, the tiebreaker, and, one, you know, little marginal things. But for the most part, you know, like the victory point tokens, for example, aren't as well explained as I would have liked but they're very minor niggles I mean there's a rules in video that you can scan the QR code for and honestly I think you'll pick this up pretty well by the end of your first game it's not complicated at all always a good thing the turns themselves are pretty smooth as well nothing really feels clunky you flip your cards simultaneously so that's all done it cuts a bit of the downtime round and then it's just turn order and you basically go well, right, well which two actions do I feel you've got trees Fire, movement, or cards, trees, fire, movement. Yeah, so four of them. And so, you know, pretty straightforward. You just pick two of them. Not the same one twice, just two of them. And if you bust, you only get one of them. So turns can be pretty quick when you've got the gist of the game and you know what you're doing. Anybody who APs in this game probably needs to play simpler games because there's not a huge amount to AP on, honestly. You've only got so many actions and you're not going to do everything. This is definitely one of those games where you're kind of focused on one, maybe two of the victory conditions from the beginning and you completely ignore the third one. But even then, you probably are just going to focus on one. Like, I'm really gunning for fire. I'm really gunning for trees. And you might not have even made that decision until your first couple the turns because you need to see what kind of head start you get it's no good saying i'm going to gun for fire and then in the first couple of rounds you barely get any water and somebody else has already put out a lot of the fires it's like uh, maybe i should change my attack and go for something else the whole card flipping mechanic i enjoy in mystic veil vale, although it can be frustrating and there is a bit of luck of the draw as well in the sense that you might have gone well i've flipped over a bunch of cards one two three and then like in three cards you've already got two of the bad symbol granted your next turn will be better but it can be a little bit annoying if you just get caught out by luck of the draw. You're going to have to accept that going in. This is a game where you're flipping cards off a deck and hoping for a decent turn. 
it's push your luck, yes, but yeah, it's luck. You know, it's not like there's no skill involved, but if that kind of thing puts you off, you're not gonna get a lot of enjoyment out of this game. But I do love the fact that you can buy these new cards, because in Mystic Veil and that, you card cracked it. That's a whole different story. Here, this is more like a mini deck builder. You rarely get to trim cards out of the deck. I mean, you can kill off the dead ones with these fragment tiles that are just another thing you can collect. But you can also use these to discard a card from the display that you didn't want for the round. But other than that, you are basically not trimming cards out of your deck, you're adding new ones in. And at the end of the day, you want to play as many cards out of your deck as possible, so that doesn't really make a big deal. You know, there are symbols in here that can counteract some of the dark symbols on here. So there's one that cancels out the dark one, so you can basically play out more cards. They don't have as many bonuses on them, but cancelling out one of those symbols can make up for it and then some. So... You know, it's a light little affair with trimming and manipulation of your deck. The turns themselves feel pretty satisfying when you pull off these little combos. So you've got all your cards together and you think, well, hang on a minute. If I, let's see, I've got two actions. If I buy that tree, that gives me an extra icon, which means when I do my second action, it then bolsters that. But then maybe instead of doing that, I should use my movement action to move around this board here. Because then I'll leapfrog you. I'll take your tree token. Thank you, because I'm gunning for trees. And then I trigger the action that lets me buy cards anyway. So I get to do all three of those things rather than two. These aren't like rocket science things that you come up with, but they're still satisfying power turns. You will have occasional turns that feel a bit lackluster, but the game's pretty quick. I mean, this game should not take longer than 60 minutes to play. I've had it take longer because of four players and AP players. It can happen. I mean, I don't think this is a gateway game by any means, but it is a light game. It shouldn't be that hard to figure it out. But yeah, if the game's taking you long longer than 60 minutes, something's gone wrong, I think. But it's not filler length either. I think 60 minutes is kind of as long as the game takes, really. Because, you're yes, you've got the turn order sequence, and it's just how long it takes people to do their turns. But you're doing the first part simultaneously, and you're still racing the 12 no matter what. So you are talking around 45, max 75 minutes for this game, which is a pretty good length, actually. I mean, you play this with two players, and it's super lightning fast. You play this with four, it's a little bit longer, but still doesn't really outstay its welcome. It's got that length down quite nicely. 40 seconds, but I want it now. The interactivity in this game is so-so. I mean, you are kind of doing your own thing, but then you have to pay attention to other players. The turn order marker goes round after every round. You can see what people are, like, putting out in the displays. You've got to think, well, Hang on a minute, if I'm going after you, you're also getting the fires, which means you're likely to put out a bunch of these fires before my turn, so maybe I should think about planting a tree instead. But then there's other aspects of the moving around the circle, because it's one thing to say, oh, well, I can do this bonus action, but then you got to think about that whole leapfrogging aspect. You leapfrog other players, you nick their victory point markers. Of course, that then puts them ahead of you ahead of them, which means they can leapfrog you and potentially get other markers or take those back. So... You're not just trying to leapfrog over people, you're also trying to stay ahead of other players so that they don't do it to you. And these victory point markers are just basically a fire, a tree, and a lotus flower. So on top of what you have on your board for fire tokens and the like for victory conditions, collect enough of these and you can offset some of the burden that you have to deal with. Do not underestimate this board. Now it feels a bit tacked on as a mechanism. I mean, you're doing most of your stuff with cards and you're putting little tiles down on here. This kind of feels like a really arbitrary thing. I mean, I'm not entirely certain what the thematic reason is for your spirits to just be like playing merry-go-round, you know, around this tree. <laughs> it's a small thing. I don't think you can make this super thematic anyway. It just, it's kind of like a weird mechanism, but it at least gives you four actions rather than three. It would probably be a bit lacking otherwise. But then there's some extra interactivity mentioned with the fire tokens. Because when you buy cards, there's a side effect. When you buy cards, depending on how high the tier is of the card, more fire tokens get put in by the evil Zed here into the middle on this tree. So if somebody's gunning for fire, you might be less inclined to buy cards because it puts more fire in there. But then I really want a powerful card. So just buy one powerful card. The fire token is level four, it's harder to put out. Rather than buying a bunch of cheapies, which puts a bunch of little two fire tokens in there, which could mean someone could really accelerate their victory condition for fire tokens because you've just put in a bunch of little twos and they're easy to put out. It's a cool little thing that you have to consider these things. Again, not rocket science. Ah!
Now the biggest con with this game is a subjective one. I don't often talk about game balance with these because you need to play these games like a hundred million times before you can really comment about balance. But there's a common thing going around with this game that balance is potentially off. The free victory conditions that you have are not necessarily equally balanced in terms of how easy they are to accomplish. You've got the fire tokens, you've got the trees, and you've got the lotus flowers. In the games I have played to date, I can safely say that the fire seems to be the easiest way to win, closely followed by the forest. You can win with the forest trees pretty well if you gun for it and do well with it, but fire is definitely simpler. Now, a lot of that is because fire tokens are always going to be available because people are buying cards. But also new players don't necessarily realize that by buying a lot of cheap cards, they're fueling the forest with fire. You can potentially shut down the momentum of a fire player by not buying a lot of cards, but then new players don't tend to realize that. And so the fire tends to be an easier way to do things. Get the water, put out the fire, nice and simple. The trees, you need to get quite a lot of tree icons in order to collect these trees, but they are giving you the permanent bonuses, so it's nice to just have some trees anyway. Nobody has won with the lotus flower rule yet. WRONG! The lotus flower has come close a couple of times if people have really gone for it, but they've usually just lost out. I feel that they could have won the game in those ones, so I don't think it's impossible to win with the lotus flower thing, but it's definitely the harder the three. I cannot accept any argument that says the Lotus Flower is balanced with the other two or easier than the other two. I do think it's just that little bit harder because if you're gaining Lotus Flowers as a bonus, you're not gaining the stuff that allows you to put out fires or collect trees or even buy more cards. It's a dead thing. It's like the provinces in Dominion. You know, those victory point cards. Yes, you need them to win, they don't do jack for you when they're in your deck, though. It's the same for these Lotus Flowers. Yeah, you need 12 of them to win. They don't do jack for you during the game, though. They don't give you any extra bonuses. And so I've always found that it's fire, greater than forest, greater than Lotus. Now, some people may have different views on this. And certainly, if you go onto the Board Game Geek forums, there's a lot of debate on this. <laughs> oh, yes. Lots of people are debating the balance of this game. And as I say, it's hard to say if it really spoils the game or not. I personally feel that fire and forest is relatively well balanced. Lotus just requires a bit more effort to do. It's not impossible, but I don't think a new player will ever win by Lotus Flowers. Yeah, you just buy the cards that give you Lotus Flowers, but then you need the acceleration to be able to do that. So a decent player, I think, will be able to do the Lotus Flower victory, and I've come very close. I have tried it. I was on 11 at one point, and then somebody got the win because of turn order, Otherwise, I would have won it, you know, in that round. And I think there was one actually where somebody got 12, but tied with someone else. And because they spent a long time getting the Lotus Flowers, they didn't really get a lot of other stuff done. And so they lost on the tiebreaker. It's doable, but nowhere near as simple as the fire in the forest. And that is a bit of a con, I must admit, because I know this going in and people will soon discover this when they come out. It's just not quite as balanced as it should be. We are reasonably satisfied with the events we have seen. So there's a lot of good stuff for Living Forest, actually. I mean, I don't think that this is quite Kennerspiel Award worthy. It's a good, solid game, but Kennerspiel Award? Yeah, that's going a little bit far. And even Kennerspiel in general. I mean, this is one step away from being family weight. I would probably have expected this to be in the Spiel the Yaris category, but even then, probably a little bit too much for that. So yeah, Kennerspiel is literally just picking up everything else that isn't a Spiel the Yaris one. Maybe they need a few more categories in this award. But that being said, it is still a pretty good solid game. I mean, the components for the, the vast most part are really good. The artwork is sublime it really does look colorful it's really nice cutesy nice pleasant little feeling the rules aren't particularly complex the game goes at a nice pace there's only a little bit of downtime you know four players you get a little bit of downtime and ap players could hold everything up but generally two or three players it goes at a pretty quick snappy pace i can't click my fingers to save my life but you know four people who are familiar with the game should be able to get the game going at a decent pace as well it's like i say it's a decent, a decent game overall, but there's just some questionable balance issues. And it's probably one that I'll play the game once, be done with it, be fine for a little bit, but then I'll want to bring it out every now and again and use it as a kind of next step game. Not quite gateway level, but certainly a next step like game. Overall, I'm giving Living Forest a close but close cigar 8 out of 10. I was contemplating giving this only a 7, but... 
I don't think this is anywhere near a distinction level, but I think there's just a lot of good stuff going for it. You know, it's a decent overall package, especially when you consider how cheap this is. So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, please consider thumbing up the video, subscribe to the channel, particularly the Patreon, if you want to help me out get with review copies and produce more content for you. Mainly, though, leave a comment in the comment section. What are your thoughts on Living Forest? Do you agree with it being a Kennerspiel nominee? Would you vote for this as the Kennerspiel winner? Have you played it? What are your thoughts? Do you think it looks cool? Do you understand how it's so cheap do you agree that zed is like a evil fire breathing spirit of destruction you know or is he actually misunderstood yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments until next time you can check out more content on the broken meeple including the recent review i did for sniper elite the uh, new hidden movement game from rebellion unplugged but also the recent expansion review i did for star wars outer rim unfinished business which is definitely taking the expansion world by storm until next time remember as always regardless of whether you're burning down a forest or planting trees to save it it's still only a game bye for now